good food. Might want to eat it. She had been on the lot for about seven years. She was a wild animal and killing squirrels and killing rabbits. So everyone in the neighborhood was kind of just trying to help her. Okay, you can eat it later. And they needed to move the dog off the lot because they were going to start construction on this big project. And so I just went up there and saw her and I was like, this dog is beautiful. So I just decided to try to figure out a way to get close to her. So I just started feeding her every single day after work, just trying to win her trust. So I just needed her to get used to me just for her to know that I wasn't going to hurt her. And we did that for a couple of months. She was just not used to interacting with humans. Then she let me pet her behind her neck. She was allowing me to be near her and to pet her and not be worried about what I was going to do. That was huge. Then she just happened to show up on the street. And I was just like, well, okay, I'll just feed you here now. And so I just started feeding her in my front yard just to see, like, if she would stick around, and she did. When I would leave for work in the morning, Molly would sit at the end of my driveway and kind of guard the house all day. <laughs> and then when I would come home from work, she would run behind my car back to my house with me. At that point, I could have slipped a leash over her head, probably. But if I missed, I would have ruined everything that we started together. We did it all at her own pace. And then eventually got to the point where, all right, if you want to eat this high value dog food and hot dogs, you have to come inside the backyard. And then one day I just slammed the gate closed and both of us looked at each other like, Oh my god, what do we do now? She pretty much just laid around in the yard all day. And some nights I slept with the back door open so that she could just come in and kind of like see what we were doing inside. She was not ready to live inside, and so I wasn't gonna push her. So she would lay on her back and like roll over and let me brush her belly. And it was a huge sign of trust. That probably took a year. I gave her a dog bed. I came home from work and she had shredded it. She would flip the pieces around and kick them around and just play in it. So there was the, the whole Snight Club shooting. I was watching the news. It was like a hundred degrees. Yeah, it was just like... I'm not doing this anymore. Like, I'm putting my foot down. Today is the day. <laughs> and so I put a Benadryl in a hot dog and I gave it to her and I waited until she fell asleep and I picked her up and carried her inside. And then she woke up and she was in the air conditioning. She was just like, yeah, I live inside. So I set up a couple of babies in the house so my two dogs could like talk to each other through the baby gates. Everybody got used to each other. Come say hi to your friend. My 16-year-old Chihuahua was the head of the house, and she quickly learned that she had to fall with mine behind her. She didn't know how to be a dog, so it was nice to see her blossom into a proper dog. I learned that she can dance from my dog Bronco. So he would play bow in front of her, and she eventually started doing it too. She started doing it in the morning when she wanted breakfast. She acclimated to the house very well. She's amazing. She's incredibly protective of me. So much of my time and energy went into taking care of her and making sure that she was okay, that we have a very special bond. If I put my arm down and she wants attention, that's what she does.